this is chapter 23 of Henrietta Lacks um, because I couldn't find it on my drive so I just thought I would read it um, and let's see this follows after the chapter about George Guy and his death and how he released Henrietta's name um, so okay so the next chapter is called it's alive and it's in book three Notice that we're like about two thirds of the way through the book. Um, please read along with me so like you will recognize like some of the names when they're written down and you'll learn new words and stuff like that. So that's on page. Sorry. Got my bookmarks, I promise. 180, 179 about. On a hazy day in 1973 in a brown brick row house, five doors down from her own, Bobette Lax sat at her friend Gardenia's dining room table. Gardenia's brother-in-law was in town from Washington, D.C., and they'd all just finished having lunch. It's such a small world, this chapter. As Gardenia clanked dishes in the kitchen, her brother-in-law asked Bobette what she did for a living, and when she told him she was a patient aide at Baltimore City Hospital, he said, really? I work at the National Cancer Institute. They talked about medicine and Gardenia's plants, which covered the windows and the counters. Those things would die in my house, Bobette said, and they laughed. Where are you from, anyway, he asked. North Baltimore. No kidding, me too. What's your last name? Babette said, well, it was Cooper, but my married name is Lax. Your last name is Lax? Yeah, why? Well, it's funny, he said. I've been working with these cells in my lab for years. and I just read this article, and they said they came from a woman named Henrietta Lax. I never heard that name anywhere else. Babette laughed. My mother-in-law's Henrietta Lax, but I know you're not talking about her. She's been dead almost 25 years. Henrietta Lax is your mother-in-law, he asked, suddenly excited. Didn't she die of cervical cancer? Babette stopped smiling and snapped. How'd you know that? Uh, those cells in my lab have to be hers, he said. They're from a black woman named Henrietta Lax who died of cervical cancer at Hopkins in the 50s. What? Babette yelled, jumping from her chair. What do you mean you got her cells in your lab? He held his hands out like, whoa, wait a minute. I ordered them from a supplier, just like everybody else. Oh, so there are people making money off of Henrietta cells now, at this point. It was like a nightmare. She'd read in the paper about the syphilis study at Tuskegee, which had been stopped by the government after 40 years. And now here was Gardenia's brother-in-law, saying Hopkins had part of Henrietta alive. And scientists everywhere were doing research on her, and the family had no idea. It was like all those terrifying stories she'd heard from Hopkins her whole life were suddenly true. And it's happening to her. If they're doing research on Henrietta, she thought, it's only a matter of time where they come from Henrietta's children and maybe her grandchildren. Gardenia's brother-in-law told Babette that Henrietta's cells have been all over the news lately because they've been causing problems by contaminating other cultures. Babette, but Babette kept shaking her head saying, how come nobody told the family part of her was still alive? True. I wish I knew, he said. Like most researchers, he never thought about whether the woman behind Gila cells had given them voluntarily okay i'm at the top of 181 oh my gosh keep reading with me you're becoming a better reader trust me babette excused herself and ran home bursting through the screen door in the kitchen yelling for lawrence part of your mother it's alive lauren called his father to tell him what babette had heard and day didn't know what to think henrietta's alive he thought it didn't make any sense he'd seen her body at the funeral and clover himself did they go dig it up? Or maybe they did something to her during the autopsy. Lawrence called the main switchboard at Hopkins saying, I'm calling about my mom, Henrietta Lacks. You got some of her alive in there? When the operator couldn't find a record of a patient named Henrietta Lacks in the hospital, Lawrence hung up and didn't know who else to call. Soon after Lawrence called Hopkins in June 1973, a group of researchers gathered around the table at Yale University at the first international workshop. Let me pause this. 